But before we get going, so this is the uh, Danny Pig uh, YouTube channel. This is where I deposit the CPD seminars or the recordings of the CPD uh, seminars. I now have five playlists. Uh, first of all is the CPD webinars, and that's where all the uh, previous seminars uh, are recorded in full and placed there. There's a separate one for MathCAD for structural engineers. So the little bits on MathCAD are in the playlist for that. My other channel is on the Deep Thinkers. Uh, so there's a few videos there about uh, philosophy and politics. Uh, Piglet Files contains tasty morsels of knowledge in easy digestible chunks, which doesn't quite fit into the other categories of MathCAD or General CPD. So there's a couple of software demos in that. And my latest venture is on big, big music. So I've been developing music uh, using AI and seeing what we can do with AI. So, uh, so welcome to uh, another CPD seminar for structural engineers. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the bronze method of pile design. And this follows the the procedure as given in the New Zealand Building Code, part B1 slash BM4. So it's verification method number four. And it's look this time we're looking at the design of timber piles subject to a lateral load. And we're going to use the method developed by Bent Bronze nearly over 50 years ago. And it's another seminar looking at a Redco uh, spreadsheet and wondering what the hell it does and giving the answer in MathCAD. So the scope. So first of all, a warning, I'm not a geotechnical engineer. I just use the soil properties provided by the geotechnical engineer and I follow their recommendations provided in the geotechnical interpretive to report. Um, so before you design walls or uh, retaining walls or piles, anything in the ground, basically, you need to consult with a geotechnical engineer to give you the right soil properties to use in your design. So I'm going to be looking at the structural design of piles and only piles today. So we're not covering the slope stability analysis or deep seated rotational failure. These need to be considered when designing retaining walls, particularly on slopes. And a quick snapshot of um, New Zealand building code BM, VM4, part of the structural part of the New Zealand building code. And the references are found in these old journals uh, from 1964 by Bent Brahms, as I say. And it's about lateral resistance of piles. One is in cohesive soils and the other one is in cohesion less soils. Uh, so the theory I'm about to show you is all in there. Now, it is one of many methods for designing piles, but it happens to be quite a popular method, particularly in New Zealand. As I say, it's already embedded in the building code for New Zealand. So what kinds of pile do you need to consider? <clears throat> well, first of all, you've got the difference between cohesive soils and cohesion less soils, and you've also got a distinction between free head and fixed head piles. And <clears throat> free head piles are split into short and long, and fixed head piles are split into short, intermediate and long, and that will determine the shape of the deformed pile, and therefore the moment you will rise in the pile. So the clue about a fixed head pile, well, if there's a big lump of concrete on top of it, it's probably a fixed head pile. Um, so if there isn't, or if it's just a timber beam nailed to the top of your pile, it's probably a free head pile. And it's really about what sort of rotation can top of the pile rotate. Looking at the type of soil, <clears throat> it's divided mainly into two types, cohesive, soil and cohesion less soil. So for cohesive soil, we do short term analysis for the initial static loading of the foundation, and we do it in terms of total stress and we use undrained shear strength. For long term analysis, we use effective stresses and use the strength parameters of effective stress and the strength of cohesion and the effective angle of shearing resistance for the clay or cohesive soil. 
for cohesion less soil we're using long-term analysis using effective stresses and again using the strength parameters of the effective cohesion and the effective angle of shearing resistance water plays a big role in the design of your foundations or any structure within the ground so it's crucial that engineers know this and engineers need to be aware of the critical role that water plays in the behavior of soil and that will determine the choice of shear strength parameters required for geotechnical design if water is present in the soil applied loads are carried in the short term by poor water pressures for granular soils above the water table poor water pressures dissipate almost immediately as the water drains away and the loads are effectively carried by the soil structure for fine grain soils such as clays and silts which are not as free draining poor water pressure takes much longer to dissipate water and poor water pressures affect the strength and settlement characteristics of the soil so remember back to your student days of your most circles you can distinguish between drained and undrained conditions by the shape of those uh, diagrams so in drained conditions we're looking at long-term loading poor water pressures have dissipated and design is carried out for effective stresses for undrained conditions you're looking at short-term loading poor water pressures are present and design is carried out using total stress uh, as a side note uh, b1 of vm4 the new zealand building code has diagrams for the soil parameters and the bearing factors and so on that you will use for your foundation design now there's one set of figures for pad foundations i.e., shallow foundations and another one for pile foundations so the bearing strength factor nq is in figure four now it's not easy to read that uh, diagram in the code so it might be worth your while doing your own based on that it's also not easy to read one because it's small but also because it's a log scale and it's harder to interpret the individual gradations of the graph a free head pile has no restrictions against head rotation when lateral displacement occurs so for a short free head pile the magnitude of the maximum bending moment in the embedded shaft is less than the ultimate strength of the pile shaft and the ultimate strength is controlled by the embedment length of the pile shaft so the strength of a long free head pile is controlled by the ultimate moment strength of the pile shaft and not by the embedded length short piles deflect in single curvature long piles deflect in double curvature reducing the moment in the pile shaft so for fixed head piles again a fixed head pile is a restrained head pile and it's restrained because it's got a constraint at the head by a fixing moment so for a short restrained head pile the magnitude of the head moment and the magnitude of the bending moment in the embedded shaft are less than the ultimate moment strength of the pile shaft and the ultimate strength is controlled by the embedment length of the pile shaft for an intermediate length restraint head pile the head moment is equal to the ultimate strength of the pile shaft and elsewhere the shaft moment is less than m alt for a long restraint head pile the magnitude of the head moment and the magnitude of the bending moment in the embedded shaft are equal to the ultimate moment of the strength of the pile shaft m alt again short restraint head piles deflect in single curvature intermediate and long piles deflecting double curvature reducing the moment in the pile shaft so now some pictures instead of all that text and we'll go through diagrams for all 10 variations now so yes i've actually done a diagram for each situation and so we take our pile on the left hand side and we vertical load and a horizontal load the pile has a, an embedded length of l and the height above the ground of f so when we're looking at a short pile in cohesive soils we assume a stress distribution as so rectangular <clears throat> and this way you're looking at the soil reactions and we split it two thirds to one third so that the overall horizontal load is effectively taken by half 
three. Uh, the deflected uh, shape of the pile is single curvature. Uh, we have a parabolic uh, moment distribution within the piled shaft itself. For a long pile in cohesive soils, we can get some double curvature bending and we have this strange looking moment distribution within the pile because we have a more unusual distribution of force within the soil. Uh, just these are simplified representations, by the way. As you should know, all models are wrong, but some are quite useful. For a freehead short pile in cohesion less soils, we use a linear distribution for the soil reaction and have this semi parabolic moment distribution down the shaft of the pile. For a freehead long pile in cohesion less soil, we have double curvature bending and this double parabolic moment distribution down the shaft of the pile, because again, we have parabolic soil distribution of reaction. For a fixed head short pile in cohesive soil, we have a straightforward uniform soil reaction and a parabolic distribution of our moments with the maximum moment being at the ground level. For an intermediate pile, in cohesive soil, we're looking at double curvature bending, so therefore we have maximum moment maybe at the ground, but possibly further down the ground at a depth called GC. For a fixed head long pile, again, we're looking at double curvature bending and we're looking at a moment distribution as shown here. Now into cohesionless soil with a fixed head pile, linear soil distribution and a parabolic moment distribution down the shaft of the pile, and the maximum moment is at the top of the pile. Whereas if it's an intermediate length pile, we've exceeded the, uh, the ground level uh, moment and the maximum shaft moment is down at a depth of GC. And finally, for our fixed head long pile in cohesionless soil, we're looking at a very strange looking soil reaction with a, again a strange looking double curvature for our moment distribution down the uh, shaft of the pile. <clears throat> so what are the failure modes? So we're looking at a cohesive soil and we're looking at a free headed pile. So failure occurs when the maximum bending moment in the pile exceeds the moment causing yielding or failing of the pile section, or the resulting lateral earth pressure exceeds the lateral resistance of the supporting soil along the full length of the pile it rotates about. And it, ro it ro rotates around a point located at some distance below the ground level. Consequently, the mode of failure depends upon the pile length and the stiffness of the pile section and the low deformation characteristics of the soil. So here is the Redco Excel spreadsheet. This one is for a cantilever pole in cohesionless soil. There's another one which is for cohesive soil. And I believe this one only does it for short piles as, as well. So I won't go into that. I'll go into the MathCAD. So here is the MathCAD file. <coughs> for our freehead timber pile in a cohesive soil. And the first portion is an introduction. Now we've gone over the introduction earlier today, but I'll say it again. We're looking at a free-headed pile with no restriction against head rotation. And we might be looking at a short head, a uh, short free pile or a long pile, depending on the resistance you're encountering. So for the purposes of the calculation, we're assuming it's installed in cohesive soil, having a constant undrained shear strength with its depth. Uh, we assume that part of the top layer provides no lateral resistance down the length of the pile. 
<clears throat> the salt reactions are split into three, resulting in three reactions. And the third reaction <coughs> resists the applied horizontal force. And they generate the shear forces bending moment shown in the diagram below. This one, as we've seen before, is for short piles. So let's put in our loads. I've got some design factored vertical load and design factored horizontal load. And we're applying that in effective height of two meters, which gives us an applied moment there of uh, five uh, kilonewton meters. So we're looking at timber section. So the timber section is designed in accordance with NZS 3603. We're taking the pile diameter as 250 mil diameter. And the bending strength is 38, taken from table four of the code. We've got some parameters which are related to uh, timber pole piles. And we're using K1 and K8 as one, and K20 and K21 as 0.85. That gives us an ultimate bending moment capacity for the pile shaft of 42 kilonewton meters. So therefore we have uh, plenty of space in our factor of safety. So that's a structural design, nice and simple. Let's look at the geotechnical pile design. And so we need to put in our soil parameters. First of all, the short term. And we're looking at an undrained shear strength SU of 25 kPa. We're using strength reduction factor for our geotechnical analysis of 0.5. We've got unit weights for soil and dry, and we can work out what the buoyant weight is by deducting the unit weight of water. We're saying that our depth of a water table is at one and a half meters down. For the long term effective stress analysis, we've got an effective stress cohesion of 2 kPa, so not huge. And we've got an effective shearing resistance angle of 28 degrees. So from B1VM4, we can work out what the ultimate lateral strength of the short freehead pile is. Um, so we can start with uh, an assumed length of 2.5. OK, and that gives us a lateral resistance by using that formula of 18 kilonewtons, which has got a factor of safety of over three and a half. You might want to reduce the length of the pile in that case. But if we carry on. So the depth to the maximum moment in the pile shaft is the 0.69. And the maximum moment in the pile shaft due to that horizontal resistance is 45. Uh, we've already said that the moment capacity of the pile shaft is 42. So therefore, your ultimate capacity of your pile is lower than the capacity of that's induced by a horizontal resistance. So we have a little flag saying you better check this as a long pile. Uh, you can derive the applied moment in the pile shaft due to your applied load H, which gives you 6.4 kilonewton meters which gives you a geotechnical design ratio of 3.2, which seems OK as a long pile. The lateral strength of a long freehead pile is derived from that formula given in B1VM4 clause 4.3.2a, and that works out as 16.9 kilonewtons, and that tells me it's OK. Now we look at the vertical load capacity. We look at the short term first, and again we work out what the total stress is at the base of the pile. That gives us the undrained base resistance VBU as a mere 12 kilonewtons. You might want to take some uh, shaft resistance, so the undrained adhesion of the shaft interface is worked out from the adhesion factor multiplied by a um, uh, undrained shear strength, so it gives you 20 kPa. That's applied around the circumference of the pile, which gives us a shaft resistance of 39 kilonewtons, which gives us a vertical pile strength of 51. So our vertical capacity ratio is 1.18, so that's just about good enough. 
So that's the short term. Let's have a look at the long term. So long term, we're looking at drained and effective stress parameters. Work out what the effective vertical stress is. Q dash is 33.95 kPa. Take our bearing strength factors. And again, this is straight out of figure four and figure three from B1 VM4. And we work out what the drained base resistance of the pile is. And that comes out as 51 kilonewtons. We're assuming the drain angle of shearing resistance at the shaft interface delta is 21 degrees, simply by taking 75% uh, of the angle of shearing resistance. We've got a KS factor which varies depending on the density of the soil you're in and the type of pile you're using. So KS equal to 2 uh, for a medium dense. And so our shaft resistance of the pile is at 25.6. The pile compression capacity long term, therefore, is 77. And the design compression capacity in the long term is 38. So we still have a factor of safety of over 1 at 1.76. Nice and simple. Um, now, there's some variations to that. If you wanted to reduce the length of the pile, so if you started it at 1.5 meters, say, you still have adequate uh, lateral load resistance, and it still says I'm a short pile, so that's fine. So this little bit you can ignore. And but you go into your vertical load capacity, it's telling you it's no good. So it's kind of Try try it out, suck it and see, and see what happens when you change the parameters. Um, a few points to note. The parameters will vary depending on whether you're a concrete pile, steel pile, or a timber pile. If you've got a concrete encased timber pile in the ground, <clears throat> your shaft obviously is going to be the concrete shaft size, but the bending resistance is based on the timber. Uh, unfortunately, it's quite difficult to show that the concrete around your timber pile is actually providing the bending resistance that you need for that timber pile. So we just conservatively assume that your bending resistance is based on your timber pile. OK, so that brings me to the end of this uh, little presentation. Uh, the next seminar will be in about a month's time, so keep checking with the Meetup website. And we were looking at steel portal frame design to NZS 3404. Again, we'll be looking at a Redco spreadsheet, some MathCAD, and also a bit of multi-frame as well. And don't forget, the seminars are uploaded onto the YouTube website. Uh, sadly, only a small number of you are subscribed, a mere 21% overall. Would be nice if you could subscribe. 